Well, good morning everybody. Welcome to video number 15. Uh, I've decided today, as the frost has now gone off the cars and the grass, and it's now probably about four or five degrees C, that um, I would get a variety of tools, so sockets, screwdrivers, some spanners there, and move on to fitting my latest acquisition, which is a, a Makuni carb, which is a, a flat side, flat slide it's called. Um, and you can see it's a, an easy kit, which means apparently I'm told that it's a, a straight bolt in. Um, it comes with a bag of uh, adapters and gaskets, or an adapter ring and gasket, um, cable ties, and then the actual carburetor. Uh, it also comes with an air filter, a round air filter, but it's just a cover. That's all that is. So I'm suspecting it's the same size as the original one. And as this is a centre bolt as well, let's get that out rather than talking about it. Um, probably won't use that bit because. But being a um, heritage soccer tail, uh, I'll try and keep the um, the uh, chrome cover that says heritage soccer tail on it. So that's the um, there we go. Look, there's the shiny bit. There's uh, two inlet holes there, um, and then the carb itself out. There we go. Look, so it's quite a size. It's a 42 millimeter. Um, haven't worked out what everything does yet drain pipe there there are things I don't know uh, for example the original filter I'm led to believe should have a black plastic uh, backing on it and there's nothing there at all just a, a gap to help it breathe uh, and the filter in there I don't know if that's original so I don't know how it's going to fit um, on the new carb so I think the first thing to do, um, the instructions say to uh, raise the back of the fuel tank a bit so that you've got access to um, the cables and so on under here. So I think the first thing to do is to get rid of all the junk, so carrier, sissy bar, pillion seat and saddle. So let's do that first and then we'll be back to you in a moment. So that's all the quick release stuff off, um, the single bolt for the pillion seat. Uh, the two bolts that hold the main passenger seat on and then I've slackened off the uh, centre nut because that's obviously what holds this on top of the tank which clears all this out of the way to get underneath to raise the back of it so let's get that off and have a look not been in here before okay, okay that's good right okay well that's that one off that's the, the skirt and that leaves us with some bolts there um, looks like there's one for the left hand and then one for the right hand so uh don't think we need the um the left hand side one off so i'll just un uh, loosen that and see if this will raise up a bit um let's have a look under here see what we've got <sighs> oh okay that's a couple of plugs there so i'll detach those and move this out of the way completely uh, so back in a moment right so those three plugs are undone so um this this flat one here Let's see if you can see that. There's a projection on the left-hand side. Uh, and it says P on the casting. Uh, that's probably for parking or something like that. But I'm going to call that P for projection because that lines up. Um, the, that's a, a single, um, can only go one way round, look, because of the clip. And likewise, uh, the um, uh, that one, uh, the the other plug, uh, I'll have to investigate, see if that can only go in one way as well. Uh, looking at the way the pins are, you can see from there, if, if they do get mixed up, that there's a gap in the middle uh, where there's no wires. And likewise, if you look at the contacts here uh, in the female plug, uh, where is it? Lost the plot, there we go. You can see there's uh, an area where there are no uh, connectors so that's pretty obvious which way that goes so let's put that carefully aside not losing the the nut put that down with the seat oh just out of interest while we're here as um i decided to buy a, a combination padlock for the steering got a good quality one for about can't remember what 20 quid or something 
uh, and that's a Harley Davidson helmet lock, uh, which is basically a, a climbing carabiner, although I wouldn't hang off a cliff on it, uh, with a combination lock built in. Um, so they can live there, that's quite a good idea, I thought. Anyway, back to the, um, the here and now. So what have we got here? Uh, right, so obviously that's a swivel there. That's a swivel bolt across there for the front mounting and then the back mounting is a single bolt. So I suspect if I undo that, uh, that looks like a locating thing for that. So that should probably be around that way and slide in there. But that's when we go back together again. Uh, we'll have to investigate what all these things do. Uh, so let's get those loosened off and hopefully we'll be able to just raise this left hand side enough to get to the cables. Back in a moment. Okay, so I've removed the the front bottom mounting bolt here and slid the, the tank. You can see there's a, a, a grommet in the fixing which slides over there and then a, a um, bolt and a washer. So holding that on. I've slackened the top front mountings which uh, just to allow everything to move about a bit. I've done this side as well, although I probably won't need to. Uh, and then I've removed the uh, rear mounting for the right hand side only. Uh, I'm not going to move it very far because it's got these short petrol pipes and I don't know how old this rubber is uh, or how perished it is and once you start disturbing these things they never really um, settle back properly. Uh, I don't want to cut the, um, the balance pipe here. Uh, I only have one pipe clip which came with the carburetor kit uh, and that one I shall be using uh, on the uh, the fuel line to the float chamber. So uh, it has given a little bit more, but the, the picture showing the cables, which you reused the originals, shows the cables going down the side of the frame, which is buried up under there. And they say to release and reroute it slightly. So, whoops, sorry. Uh, so I theoretically need to get up in here, which might be a bit of a pain. Um, but uh, they also show a square box section of frame and I've got tubes in there. So uh, I'm gonna keep an open mind. Um, I'll start taking off here and get further in so we can get to the carburetor um, and uh, be a bit more um, uh, educated about uh, what we've got to do. So uh, I'll go and find my um, Allen, uh, Allen keys and uh, we'll start taking the front off. So they are, there we are, SAEs. Oh, just out of interest, if anybody wants to know, um, this is, it's, although it doesn't say anywhere, the, um, the advert said this was fully synthetic um, and it was 40 pound for 10 liters. Uh, so I bought two, one there, one there. Um, so 80 pound for 20 litres, I thought that was good value. Uh, I think if you change the oil every three or 5,000 miles maximum, uh, it doesn't really matter what you put into a, a great degree because um, uh, apart from, you know, synthetics run cooler and so on and so forth, but uh, as long as you keep the oil changed, it won't break down too much. Anyway, back to this. Um, let's uh, put you on hold a minute while I uh, undo the front of the uh, air filter. Uh, oh, you could watch. Okay, so let's have a look. What do we got? That's that big. So let's say that one. Oh, terrible. Okay, how about that one? See previous comment. Okay, there we go. That's there. Have that off of there. Put that on and then let's start undoing that. Now I've never been in here before, so um, we'll have to see what we find. I want to try and keep the original uh, air filter cover if I can because of course it's got um, Heritage Springer on it, whereas the Universal replacement um, the universal replacement, of course, is just blank. 
So let's carefully set that aside. Okay. So now I'm faced with this. Uh, for HD twin cam covers only, right? Okay, that's interesting. Well, it was fitted by a, a dealer, so I'm going to assume that it's um, it's adequate. The bike certainly seems to run okay. Uh, and it's useful to know that being a Harley Davidson one, because uh, although the back's missing, I can get um, replacement filters for it. So let's get a smaller Allen key, uh, undo these, and we'll have a look at what's behind. So there's the, the filter off. I notice it says dry type, do not oil. And inside there's a, a rather murky looking puddle after, what have I done? About a 1500, maybe 2000 miles. And the whole of the bottom third of it is, um, is damp. Uh, so uh, obviously the breathers are working. Um, I'm not sure this is a good thing because once that all gets clogged up like that. Uh, anywho, I'll get a, uh, a cloth, give that a wipe off. And catch you again in a minute. Right, so that's given that a wipe. I see now we've got Torx screws. So we've had Allen bolts, hexagonal bolts and now Torx. Um, so I've looked out uh, some a random set I have, which I bought for my BMW a while ago before I sold it. Uh, that's a bit slack, not liking that too much. Let's try the next one up. Oh dear, Oops, wrong way round. I said up, not down. Let's go bigger. Yes, there we go. So that's a good fit there. That's uh, easy, and we've got a three-eight drive. For anybody who doesn't know. If you look at the um, uh, this pipe, this brass pipe here, when you give your throttle a twist, you give it three twists before you start it when it's cold. If you watch there, you can see petrol squirting in at just a gentle turn. So it gives the engine a good slug straight down the bore. Um, so it just gives it a, a straight squirt into the bore, which helps to flood it um, for cold starting. So um, let's get back onto these um, and see how this comes off the carburetor. I'm hoping this back plate will go straight on the new one, or leastways um, these three uh, look like they unbolt. They look like um, tube nuts of some sort, uh, and I'm guessing that's what that adapter's for over there on the toolbox. So let's get these two screws undone. Back to you in a moment. So next stage, we've removed the back plate. There were three bolts holding it on. As you can see, they're not uh, nuts, they were bolts. Uh, and the two little uh, torque screws. So that takes those three and those two off. Uh, and then the next thing will be the breather pipe. Uh, I've left the back plate dangling on the breather pipe because um, it's got to be used on the, uh, the next bit. So um, uh, I'm guessing the adapter plate will take into account that. But this has got to, uh, sorry, this has got to go because um, it's uh, everything's behind it. Um, I notice the carburetor is now um, flexing, so uh, we must be getting somewhere there. I don't know what we got. No, whether it's just a, a push fit in there or what it is, I don't know. Um, you'll see that the cables are now slack here. Look, uh, because I have come up the top while I was here, and undone the lock nut and tightened these the, these are fixed to that side so they tighten in to shorten the, the cable rather than unscrewing off of here um, so those are both as slack as they'll go uh, and uh, that should give me plenty of leeway there uh, I'm going to stop for a minute because um, I think we should start reading the instructions if all else fails uh, certainly uh, I can cut this off I can take these off and then it's a question of seeing uh, how the carburetor actually releases. So that's the next thing to do. Right, so that's the breather assembly, the two bolts undone. Uh, the whole thing has come off with the banjo bolts. Uh, there's bits of scrap and crap all over it, so I'll give this whole thing a bit of a wipe over. Uh, I'll set that aside for later on. Um, and then when we come to put it back together, you'll know what that's all about. Uh, while I'm here, 
oops there goes the breather parts uh, I'm just looking at this uh, and I'm assuming that most of those holes are going to line up there's one two three four five six six holes in the adapter and four holes there so hopefully we'll be uh, away with the mixer okay there uh, so uh, we'll come to that in a moment I'm going to stop and read the instructions as I say uh, I must give all those uh, that's a washer there and that goes on the other side of that all right okay so let's leave all that alone for a minute while we uh, dive in and start reading how to install just to make sure I mean I'm quietly confident but it's always better to make sure we haven't missed anything obvious so uh, back in a moment okay so next stage the instructions say disconnect the choke from its bracket so I've undone this back nut here let's get back so you can see it and that now slides out of there look so I've undone that back nut slid it off of the bracket that will now slide out along with the carburetor uh, I might have to move that fuel line out the way but that will go and then round on the business side uh, got a screwdriver under here leave with that open the clip and then pulled it off the bell end uh, put a couple of bits of tissue in just to keep out any aardvarks just good practice I mean, it's not likely here but um, uh, and I pulled off the the vacuum a bit fuzzy there the vacuum pipe from the um, from the little stub there so that's the pipe there that uh, goes to the fuel tap uh, and now the whole thing is wagging around because it uh, as I was fiddling with it it sprung out of the rubber um, the rubber adapter which you can't quite see because it's too gloomy at the back uh, I would put a flashlight on but I'm not sure how that works anywho uh, so now I've just got the cables to unclip uh, from their holders uh, and then give everything a bit of a wipe around uh, and then um, it's on the good bits of putting the new bits on because we've taken all the old bits off so uh, next thing to do will be to um, see how oh, it looks like the cables will just lift up out of there yeah so the cables will lift out of the top pieces there look you can see one's halfway out already looks like a small that's either a piece of the outer it, that's got wedged in there where it's broken um, or it's uh, a, a, no it's got to be the outer anyway I'll have a look at that let me get back to that one so that's the next stage. Right, okay, so there's the carburetor off. So I've got my fuel pipe, the vacuum pipe. Uh, I don't know which is which, let's have a look. Closed, right. So the spring is the close. There's a small spring there, I don't know what that's supposed to do, just makes everything a bit soggy but maybe it balances and puts a bit of tension on the return. Uh, so that's obviously the pull. Uh, it does say disconnect the, the clip of this cable, uh, which is about here. So goodness knows what you're supposed to do to get to that, but we'll investigate that in a minute. Um, I'll put this currently clean part of the uh, um, this rag in the inlet manifold just to keep out any aardvarks. There we go, because I might stop for a break in a minute and give these, while well, I've got access to here, give all this sort of thing a bit of a clean, because you don't usually get into this part of it very often. Uh, if anyone's interested to compare old to new, uh, we got that. Um, I think the, um, the size, that the choke of the carburetor seems to be... Um, uh, slightly larger I would have to say but without looking um, there's no point in going too large because your manifold is the same size uh, although it looks bigger they're actually when you put the two together they're the same size um, and you're limited by this uh, by the manifold of the engine and if you make the bore of the carburetor too big the airflow is too slow over the top of the tube to suck out the petrol. So bigger is not always better. Um, anyway, 
we're all there just a question of starting to reassemble it now um, so uh, I'm gonna have a stop because my feet are cold uh, I'll go and get a cup of coffee and then um, well I'll put the tools away on it and then we'll come back out and crack on again okay so we're um, following the instructions here <coughs> it looks like we have a screaming eagle back plate uh, I did say I didn't know what it was but it's um, it's not a plastic box like that which is the original one uh, it's one of those uh, doesn't say screaming eagle on it anywhere but uh, hey so I've put the adapter on you can see I've cleaned everything up <coughs> flushed out the brake cleaner flushed out the banjo bolts um, I'm a little bit concerned to see that one of them has been over tightened um, that one there look if you look at the shape of that hole um, so <coughs> somebody's done that up too tight so uh, anyway we'll have to see how that goes so um, this is a there's a, a rubber o-ring in the adapter plate which just simply fits over the top of the carburetor so now it's a question of um, putting this on the bike connecting up the connecting up the cables push fit into the um, uh, the uh, intake manifold and then we can start push fit with the rubber on that side so um, that will be the next stage <coughs> So uh, it does say it's a tight fit, so let's pull out that. Uh, you can see there's a, a rubber, a short rubber washer. Um, so, uh, and it says to use a bit of grease on there. Where has it gone? There we go. There's a short rubber washer there, and that's a straight push fit on the, on the uh, carburetor. So let's connect up the uh, cables and uh, run a little bit of grease around there so it's a bit slippery and see how we get on. Okay, so the carburetor's gone back in. Look, a new one. Uh, there's uh, only about two or, two or three mil gap there between the cooling fin and the edge of the carburetor, and an equally small amount there. Uh, you can't really see it very well, but um, I'm going to let that go. Um, you can see from the top that the the rubber gasket. Oh, it's behind that. Uh, behind that pipe there but the rubber gasket has gone on uh, fully all the way round uh, so there's no clean metal showing anymore and the cables are seated in the uh, in the holders properly uh, that pipe that pipe there is the vacuum pipe so that's gone on nicely that was a straight push and likewise the fuel line was a straight push on and then a supplied jubilee clip so um, Let's get that, uh, I'll get these cables adjusted now because there's heaps of slack where we where we loosened it off. Look, you can see that's all flopping around like a turd in the Thames. Uh, but we'll get that so that we can get the, oops, we'll get that so we can get the, uh, the uh, slide working properly. So I'll show you that in a moment. So, adjusting to the cables, uh, I'll lock these off in a moment. You can see that they they flap around nicely, uh, and the uh, the tick over adjustment the the uh, slide is down the bottom. It doesn't go down anymore, and you can hear it. I don't know if it will pick up on this. The throttle slide goes completely down and completely open, 100% open. So that's all hip and groovy. You can see also the, the cables at the top of the carburetor there. Um, if we can pick it up there, look, you see there's a bit of movement in there, a little bit of slack, which is all you need. So uh, we'll lock them off. And then it's a case of uh, starting to put on the front piece now, the air filter and the uh, breathers. And then after that, uh, remount the choke, which is just resting in place at the moment. So I'll remount the choke knob uh, and then we're away with the mixer. Okay, so here's the um, getting near the uh, final stage now, apart from tuning it, which uh, will be another day because it's trying to rain and um, I've had enough for today. I've been playing all day on and off, backwards and forwards. So uh, I, um, I've got the, uh, the back plate on, uh, the breather 
is pushing against the top of the carburetor, which I don't like. I would have preferred to see a little bit of clearance there, but then I suppose it stops it falling off, I don't know. Uh, and I notice that the gap at the back, um, now between the, let's see if I can point it out there, that gap there, it's now about five or six mil instead of three mil and the same here which means that it's gone in at the top and out at the bottom um, hang on let's get that uh, nicely lined up so where are we going there that gap there you see my finger through it that's wider than it was um, so but it's fairly stable the whole thing doesn't seem to go anywhere um, I, I can't remember I think I've got the breathers correctly um, lined up the bracket um, this, the, this screaming eagle back plate was slightly off of the bracket and it's pulled in straight so that's pushed the whole thing in fairly solidly so uh, I'm going to live with that and see how it goes uh, so now it's a question of putting the old um, tank back together I put done all the bolts back up so now I'm and put the, um, the breather hoses back on uh, so now it's a question of uh, cables single bolt down the middle and then all the quick release stuff uh, I've got to work out um, why this has got a a clip there and not there and equally why this has got a, a post there and not there but um, maybe that's maybe that's supposed to go through this hole or something um, I don't know I've got to have a play with it uh, not really much to see putting all the just putting the clips back together and making sure the cables are nicely uh, laid in there um, and then, uh, yeah, it's just the, uh, the quick release stuff and then I can take it out for a test drive. Uh, I will see if I can start it today because I want to know, same as you do, I expect. Make sure it actually does run. Um, and I should be able to keep it running on tick over because there's this um, great big adjustable cable. I don't know what that's all about. Why well, I can't just have a screw like anybody else, but hey, there we are. So... Um, Let's finish the thing off and then we'll uh, see if it'll fire up. Uh, battery's getting low by the way, so um, sorry if it doesn't work. Okay, so we're all back together. Here's the moment of truth. Let's see if it starts. Uh, you have to uh, bear in mind that it's completely empty. The carburetor got a completely empty float chamber, so and it's a vacuum petrol tap. So we'll have to allow it to fill up. So, petrol on. Uh, I'll try the choke, but no point in cranking the throttle because there's no uh, there's no petrol in it. Oh, ignition on. Oh, that's good. I'll try a little bit of throttle. choke on at the moment so it's not really fair on it.
Okay, catch you in a minute.